If you would like a free newsletter on this or other subjects, just give us a call at Christian Answers. The phone number is area code 512-218-8022. That's 512-218-8022. Or you could email us at cdebater at aol.com. That's cdebater at aol.com. And welcome once again to our program. I'm Larry Wessels, Director of Christian Answers, and you are watching Christian Answers. And with me is our Director of Research for Christian Answers, Steve Morrison. Steve, great to have you here, brother. Good to be here, Larry. Uh, we're doing a continuing series on early church history and how it relates to us here in, in the 21st century as Christians, and how it also relates to all these other belief systems that are out there, particularly the uh, attacks that we as Christians get from unbelievers, how uh, the Bible's been changed. Uh, we today don't have the same Bible. We don't have the same beliefs as Christians did a couple of thousand years ago, and everything's messed up, and so we're just believing a bunch of baloney. Well, this series is going to get into detail about early church history, the documentation we have for it, and how, after a thorough analysis of that, we as Christians today in the 21st century can have confidence that we believe the same as Orthodox early church believers, early Christian church believers, believed a couple thousand years ago, despite what all the unbelievers want to say. And that's what we're doing here today. That's uh, where we're going to benefit from the tremendous research that uh, our director of research, Steve Morrison, has done in this situation. And uh, like I've said, this is a series, a continuing series, and this is show number three now. So we're picking up basically where we left off from show number two and continuing now as we go through early church history. We Basically, in shows one and two, we did a who's who mm -hmm. of early church history. Uh, Steve's going, been going through all that, and uh, now we're going to pick up uh, where we left off, and Steve... Kindly do so. <laughs> okay. Um, as we said in the first show, uh, we have a list of doctrines that, that four or more, each doctrine, four or more early church writers wrote about and affirmed and nobody denied. And we're, and we're going to see what the early Christians taught because who would better, apart from the Bible, who would better know what Jesus' first followers taught than if you were to ask them and, and ask their followers. And we have uh, almost 4,200 pages of material that they wrote, and which I have gone through every page and looked and, and categorized as to what did they say, what did they really believe, and what was it that they died for. It is estimated, by the way, that about 30 to 40,000 Christians were martyred uh, in the first 300 years. Uh, some of them were killed because they believed in Christ. Uh, most of them technically were not. Um, they were killed not because they believed that, that in Christ, but they would not worship any god uh, besides the true God of the Bible, you know, the Father, Son, and Spirit. And because they would not sacrifice to the Roman emperors or anybody else, um, they, they were killed. And so for people who want to, like, mix Christianity and some other religion, here are people that were already Christians, and they would rather die than, uh, than, than mix with anything else. So these writers wrote from about 97 to 98 A.D. to 325 A.D., and let's see what they said. Uh, first of all, uh, here, here's what they said about the Bible. Uh, they said they study and obey God's word as an authority. Um, and there were 36 writers who said or implied that, that, that that's what, what you should do. And so if someone says, well, they you know, didn't have the Bible until Nicaea, well, then how come you know, they, they, would, they would study the Bible, uh, both Old Testament and New Testament? And speci specifically, you have 37 uh, authors, at least, who uh, quoted from the Old Testament as an authority, like to prove a point or to show a prophecy, a prophecy of, of Jesus. 
And of course, Jesus himself did that too, uh, you know, many places. Uh, but, uh, and that just shows that there cannot be anything to Gnosticism, which said that Jesus was a different God who was against, uh, from a different God who was against the God of the Old Testament. So just so the listeners at home don't miss the point of what you're saying here, you're basically saying, so I want the folks at home to understand this, that when you're reading these early church fathers' writings, and in our first two shows, we showed you how you can get on the internet, there's Christian booksellers and publishers that offer all this material for anyone to check out, that when you're reading these early church writers, they're actually giving references from the Bible, talking about how it should be used as an authority. All over the place. See, that's the point. I don't want anybody to miss what Steve is saying here, that when you're reading these early church fathers, they are referencing right back to the Word of God, the Bible, that we in the 21st century are also referencing to. And that's the importance of it. Uh, but anyway, continue. I just want to make okay. sure that point was not missed. Okay. So on one hand, they really they love to refer to the Old Testament, and, and 21 writers showed how the Old Testament prophesied about Christ. Um, they also acknowledged that Jesus superseded Old Testament laws, especially you know no more sacrifices, uh, especially the dietary laws, though not the moral laws. Uh, but they also show that the New Testament is our authority. And they quoted from a, either a particular book from the New Testament as an authority, or as Jesus said, um, or they just called it the New Testament. And there are at least 24 writers who did, who did that. And j just as an example, I, I saw the other day how somebody emailed me and they said, well, why can't we trust Paul? Because there's nothing outside of his writings that corroborates the, that he should have been an, an, an apostle. And actually, that's a false statement, because in 2 Peter 3, in uh, 15 and 16, it, uh, it says that, um, you know, Peter uh, refers to Paul's writings as scripture. So he corroborated it. And apart from that, of course, you have the evidence of the early church. Okay? Uh, the Gospel of John uh, was written by John. And uh, also uh, Hebrews, James, First and Second Peter, you know, First, Second John or Jude, they were scripture. The early church had, uh, was, some of them weren't too sure about uh, Jude and Second Peter, but uh, for those books it was that way. And the book of Revelation it is scripture. Now some people in some churches today, um, liberal churches, uh, I know a couple who got kicked out of a, a liberal Presbyterian church because they taught in the book of Revelation. All right, well, the early church, they accepted the scripture just like the, they, they accepted the other books. And frankly, there's a lot more I could have put uh, in here on scripture, but we have a, an, another show, a related to Da Vinci Code, that shows which early fathers referred to which books of scripture. So there's a lot more detail on that that we're going to kind of pass, up, pass over for now. In fact, just to get a little advertisement, you might say, since you mentioned the Da Vinci Code, in fact, uh, on our website that you're the webmaster for, uh, BibleQuery.org. Mm -hmm. uh, if someone were to go to that website, BibleQuery.org, uh, you can go to the the place on there where it says experience. Mm -hmm. And then once you're into the, the category of experience, it'll also bring up our past newsletters, which a newsletter on the Da Vinci Code was done by you. Uh, well, you did it. I had an article. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You wrote the article, though. Mm -hmm. uh, you did the lead article in the newsletter, uh, and we also did a video that pertained to the Da Vinci Code movie, which came out a few years ago and stuff like that. But in that video that you're referencing to, there's plenty of church history that you brought up in that video, and I'm, I'm basically letting people know that. This is another excellent source for those viewers watching this right now to go. Go to our, our, our website, BibleQuery.org. Go to Experience. Look up the newsletter on the Da Vinci Code uh, with a lead article written by Steve. And in there, it'll tell you also about how to acquire or watch that video, which is also on the Internet. But that video emphasized um, the early church acceptance of Scripture. And these videos are actually kind of complementary to show that the doctrines that they believed back then, you know, how they compare the doctrines we had. Exactly, today. exactly. But I just didn't want that point to be missed. Okay. And it was also a good opportunity to just let people know that, hey, you know, there's this other material out there that's available that you can access right away on your computer at no charge. Anyway, go ahead. Okay. So just give you a couple of quick examples of B1 study God's words and authority. Theonis of Alexandria. Uh, who lived about 300 A.D., he said, Let no day pass by without reading some portion of the sacred scriptures, 
at such convenient hour as offers, and giving some space to meditation. And never cast off the habit of reading the Holy Scriptures, for nothing feeds the soul and enriches the mind so well as those sacred studies do. This is in the letter of Theonis, uh, Bishop of Alexandria to Lucianus, the chief chamberlain, uh, chapter 9, page uh, 161. So uh, that was good advice back in 300 AD. It's equally good advice today. Um, in uh, B3, Clement of Rome is just one of many people who said that Isaiah 53 refers to Christ. Okay? Well, looking at, at additional Bible doctrines, it says the Old Testament has types of Christ. Uh, so some things, for example, like Abraham almost sacrificing his son Isaac um, is, is, is a type of Christ's sacrifice for us. And so we recognize that today, they recognize that back then. Melchizedek in spe specifically was a type of Christ, um, you know, according to Hebrews 7, 1 through 17, uh, and many church writers. Also, some parts of the Bible are allegorical. They have a, 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 a spiritual meaning. Look at some of the things, uh, many people see that in Song of Solomon, uh, uh, you know, and in some of the parables of Jesus. Okay, now they also believe that, uh, uh, some things that we wouldn't necessarily agree with today. Uh, the Septuagint was a Greek translation of the Bible, uh, of the Old Testament, made before the time of Christ. And it got its name because of the legend that there were 70 uh, Jewish scribes who independently translated the Hebrew to the Greek. And at the end, their translations all miraculously agreed completely. Um, this is now pretty much universally thought not to be true, but there were six early church writers who uh, believed that and, and, and taught that. So... They goofed below on that. And they made some fundamental mistakes. Um, they had some incorrect references to Bible verses. Um, they misquoted some Bible verses or some unknown Bible verses, unknown to us. Or they had over-allegorical Bible interpretation. So, just to give you some examples. Um, for E1, in Clement of Alexandria, he says, And in the Gospel of John, he says, Serpents, brood of vipers. This is in Structure, Book 1, Chapter 9, page 229. Well, Jesus did say that, but that was in Matthew 3, 7, or Luke 3, 7, but it wasn't in John. So, you know, sometimes people go from memory, and sometimes people make mistakes back then as well as today. For example, of unknown Bible verses in 2 Clement, about 150 A.D., uh, this is volume 7, chapter 14, page 518, it says, The Lord has said, Even though you were, you were gathered together in me in my very bosom, Yet, if you were not to keep my commandments, I would cast you off and say to you, Depart from me. I know you not when she are, you workers of iniquity. Okay, well, the second half is kind of similar to Matthew 7, 23 and Luke 13, 27. But the first half, we don't have anything like that in our New Testament. So is this something he remembered incorrectly? Was this maybe a saying of Jesus that uh, was preserved by, uh, by early writers, but we don't have a Bible today? Because some things we need to remember is like when you read the Sermon on the Mount, uh, you know, it may, in, in Matthew, for example, it may take you, you know, three to five minutes to read it or whatever, but this was actually a, a sermon that probably went on for an hour, maybe, maybe a couple hours. And so what we read in Matthew is sort of like the highlights or the summary. So is this something else that Jesus may have said? Possibly, possibly not. All right, uh, uh, for example, of over-allegorical interpretation. Unfortunately, the early church had a lot of this. Uh, Novation uh, saw that the Old Testament commands not to eat camel meat, and camels, of course, have the big hump and kind of crooked legs. That means that the life crooked with crimes, that it condemns a life crooked with crimes. Well, actually, I think the command not to eat camel meat really means don't eat camel meat. <laughs> uh, it, exactly. But, uh, but in, in his, I guess, interest in finding more and more truth, he kind of went a little overboard. And other early church fathers did, especially Origen, uh, but that's kind of a um, kind of a warning to us today. You know, if somebody says, "Boy, you had such great teaching. No one else could have found this but you." And in, in a two thousand years, nobody saw this except you. Maybe it's that's a sign that what you're saying is bogus. <laughs> uh, it, 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 right. it, if if God couldn't communicate the, met, the 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 secret meaning to anybody but you, all this time later. Okay. Now they, there are uh, other places to where they don't really have a consensus. Um, they, they, they didn't really refer to the book of Philemon. Uh, it's a very short book in the New Testament, though, except in, in one reference did the Muratorian Canon, which was a list drawn up of the books in the New Testament and excluding uh, some of these spurious things. It shows Philemon, but uh, no other uh, writer referred to that short book. But on the other hand, if someone read your stuff um, you know, that, that you've written, how often would they find the book of Philemon and what you wrote? Okay. 
likewise in the Old Testament, there's no reference in the, to the book of Obadiah, which is a very short book. However, there were five references to what were called the Twelve, and that's what today we call them the Minor Prophets, which are Twelve Prophets, and Obadiah is one of them. Okay, there was some uncertainty about whether they would accept Second and Third John. Uh, there was Origen, uh, which I already me mentioned, that said the Bible is without error spiritually, but he said it had little literal errors, and he denied that Second Peter ought to be in the Bible. And he also disagreed. Uh, the early church disagreed on the value of a book called The Shepherd of Hermas, which was an allegory written about, oh, 170 A.D. or so. Uh, and also a book we don't have today called The Gospel of the Egyptians, which, of course, Mark later evangelized in Egypt, and, and we don't know, you know, and Peter was there too, and we don't know what relation I might have with that. And a book called The Apocalypse of, of Peter. Okay, who wrote the book of Hebrews? Well, the end of Hebrews indicates that the readers of Hebrews would recognize who it was, but it didn't actually say. Three and a half writers, and we'll get to the half later, said that Hebrews was written by Paul. However, Tertullian said it was by Barnabas. And Origen said that while he thought it might be the, the thoughts might be those of Paul, he thought he didn't know who wrote it down. So in pre Nicene times later, they, they weren't certain if it was Paul or somebody maybe with Paul. Okay, what about the Apocrypha? Well, uh, Jews and Christians all agree uh, that the books of the Tanakh which is, we would, Christians would say is the Jewish term for the Old Testament, uh, we're all agreed on those books, um, except that the Jews and Christians have them in a different order, but it's the same constant. It, uh, it's the same content. Uh, however, they're different apocryphas. The Council of Trent in the Catholic Church has eight more books, plus they have four additions to Daniel and Esther. You're talking about the Roman Catholic the Church. The Roman Catholic Church, yes. Uh, the Slavonic Orthodox Apocrypha has those books. It also has uh, two Ezra's, three Ezra's, three Maccabees, and parts of two other books. Uh, Prayer of Manasseh and Psalm 151. The Greek Orthodox Apocrypha also has four Maccabees. The Coptic Church Apocrypha has one, first, second, third Maccabees, Barak, Ecclesiasticus, which is also called Sirach, Judith, Tobit, Wisdom of Solomon, and additions to Daniel and Esther. However, uh, un later, uh, in, under Cyril V, uh, the patriarch, or actually the Coptic Church, we would call him the Pope of the Coptic Church, uh, rejected these books. And Melito of Sardis is the only New Testament writer who was kind of a little different here. He rejected all the Old Testament uh, Apocrypha, but he also rejected Esther and Nehemiah. And Hippolytus rejected some of the Orthodox Apocrypha. Uh, ma majority of early Christians, though, accepted at least some Old Testament Apocrypha. Julius Africanus wrote to Origen about his doubts about some of what he saw were um, inconsistencies in the book of Susanna. As we brought it before, in the early church, just imagine before 50 AD, you're going to share the gospel with somebody. You don't have a Bible. Uh, you can go talk to an apostle or you can talk to a disciple of the apostle, but, uh, and you have some writings starting with Paul's letters, but only about 100 AD that you had those. And after then it was disseminated. Um, so it, so it was a little bit, uh, you know, of a process uh, when we saw the, 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 for them to come where they came. And with the, we're not indebted to the early church for giving us the New Testament. I mean, it was, it was, it was written in the time of Paul and, and, and by the apostles. But we are indebted to the early church for recognizing the New Testament. And um, so to see that, and especially when Satan brought up all these counterfeit books, uh, these spurious books, these pseudonymous uh, authors, and all these Gnostic things that came out, the early church had to hold fast and say, look, even though you know, these things are out there, they only want it with an eyewitness. And even books like First Clement, which is an excellent book to read, I'd recommend people read it just like they ought to read you know, good Christian books today, it was rejected as canon because Clement was a great guy, but he was not an eyewitness of Jesus. Right. And the apostles were eyewitnesses. Paul was an eyewitness too because, of course, he saw Jesus on the road to Damascus. Okay. Now, there are a couple of things not taught by four or more writers, or they were taught by more, but they were denied by other Christians. Um, so, uh, here are some things that uh, let the chips fall where they may. We're going to say that these cannot be proven uh, just from early church, a uh, consensus of early church writings. Okay. There, uh, one view that a lot of people have is there's no authority except the Bible. Okay, they accepted the Bible as an authority, but they also had authority of their uh, church leaders and bishops also. Okay, uh, later in the Roman Catholic Church, there was a big thing about forbidden books, and you can't read from this index of forbidden books. They had no concept of forbidden books back then. 
Okay, in the Middle Ages, uh, the Roman Catholic Church, it was a crime punishable by death for the laity to possess scripture. Okay, they wanted to spread the scriptures. They wanted everybody to have the scriptures. Okay, uh, there's nothing that says a laity could or could not interpret scripture. Okay, there's a, a forgery done in the Middle Ages called the Gospel of Barnabas. All right, until the time of the Middle Ages, there was no mention or anything about this book, and despite what some Muslims might try to tell you. Okay. Uh, not everyone believed all these things, though. Outside the church, uh, Tatian was an Orthodox Christian who studied under Justin Martyr, uh, but after Justin died, uh, he became an Ancretite Gnostic. Now, Tatian, he wrote a harmony of the Gospels called the Diatessaron, and the Diatessaron basically means the four. And all he did is he copied about 70% of the verses in the, in the four Gospels, and he put them together uh, chronologically. And the 30% the that he left out were the verses that emphasize the humanity of Jesus. Like, think of the genealogies, uh, think of, you know, Jesus hungering and things like that. Because as a Gnostic, he uh, believed that, you know, Jesus like uh, came and appeared as a man, but they didn't necessarily affirm the complete humanity of Jesus. But anyway, looking at what this heretic wrote, what he wrote that the Gospel verses said, and what we have today, are almost word for word the same. In fact, you know, people would almost say, well, uh, from a manuscript uh, um, perspective, it's very uninteresting because there, there, there's nothing new. So here was almost like a hostile witness to Christianity who affirmed that the gospel verses that we have are the same gospel verses that he copied way back in 170 A.D. Yeah, that, that's an, a very important point because when you can take an enemy of the gospel of Christ and he, albeit he only takes 70%, Mm -hmm. of the parts he agrees with kind of reminds me of uh, Thomas uh, Thomas Jefferson I've used this many times at Monticello if you go there to historical site for uh, where they made a shrine out of his where he used to live they still have his Bible there and it's a truly holy Bible because what uh, Thomas Jefferson did is he took some a little knife or something and he cut out every verse that he didn't agree with Mm -hmm. He particularly didn't like miracles and all this divine, showing Jesus was divine in the Bible. So he cut out all these verses. So he ended up with what we can truly call a holy Bible because he cut it full of holes. <laughs> uh, and here's a guy taking the Bible and only using, reproducing 70% of it, which he agrees with, right. and cutting out all of humanity. Now see, Thomas Jefferson, in his case, he liked the humanity of Christ. Mm -hmm. He didn't like the deity of Christ. Right. So he cut out all the deity of Christ verses. And, but now here's a guy that's going the other way and cutting out. But the, the fact of the matter is you can take Thomas Jefferson's Holy Bible, take this guy's Holy Bible in the sense that he's only using 70%, and if you mesh it, what he left out of the you would get the, the exact, yeah. exactly, you would get all the verses, yeah. word for word. And that's... That's what we're talking about here. Even the enemies of, of the gospel, when they reproduce the scripture, it's, it's authentic showing, hey, this matches mm -hmm. what, what we have. They just leave out the stuff they don't like. Yeah. But we can still, by taking all the different references, show that the, the gospels that we have it today is the same now as they had back then. Right. Anyway, go ahead. Okay. Now, other Gnostics had their own books. And they, some of them combined Greek mythology and the, uh, and the New Testament, uh, especially they selectively used parts of Paul's and some of the four Gospels. And the, the Ebionites used a shortened form of the Gospel of Matthew, and they generally rejected Paul. Okay, uh, Religions today that disagree, we already talked about uh, the Jewish Bible, the Old Testament's the same as what the Protestants have, and a subset of Catholics and Orthodox and Copts. Uh, Mormonism uh, has taught that the Bible is the Word of God insofar as it is translated correctly, but then they claim that many plain and precious parts were lost. And they have three additional scriptures. Reverend Moon of the Unification Church, uh, and his followers believe Reverend Moon is Christ's return, said that the Bible was great for 2,000 years ago, but today we need a higher standard, which is the book he wrote. And liberal Christians like to judge for themselves what parts of the Bible they want to accept and want to reject. The Thomas Jefferson approach. Right. Very, very, very similar to that. I had an open public discussion with a, a, a Sunni Muslim imam, and in talking about God's word, uh, on the ten points, basically on B1 he agreed, on uh, B2 he kind of said half. He said, well, he believes the old, Muslims believe the Old Testament was originally given by God, at least the Torah, 
and Psalms and maybe other parts, but they believe it's corrupted today. Uh, he agreed that the Old Testament prophesied about Jesus. Uh, before he agreed, Jesus superseded some Old Testament laws. Our New Testament is an authority. He somewhat agreed and somewhat disagreed. He uh, did not necessarily, you know, by all by Paul, but he believed that the Gospels, you know, in the original form, were may have been from God. Other Muslims, by the way, don't think the Gospels are something different. Um, and on six, uh, he said some. And uh, now this Muslim Imam on number seven, he said Muslims had to respect all the scriptures that Jews and Christians held and believe they still contain some of God's truth though not in uncorrupted form. So this Muslim imam believed that. Other Muslim imams just reject Paul just totally. So um, that's a little difference of opinion there. Um, that, uh, and he doesn't have too much of a comment on B8 or, 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 or B9, and he wasn't so sure about B10. So that, uh, there's a lot more we can say about the early Christians and, and what they said about the Bible and what they accepted. And we've kind of said that already in the Da Vinci Code. So we'll kind of wrap up. Uh, you know, what we have well, over there. It's interesting. You see, the, the Muslim imam you're talking about, mm -hmm. it's sort of like uh, Thomas Jefferson or this guy taking 70% from the old. Everyone has their opinion. And what it really comes down to is, do you believe the Word of God, the Bible, or not? Mm -hmm. And that's really, they ask the test. Do you believe it or do you not believe it? And uh, are you going to take it for what it says or are you just going to throw out parts of it, uh, uh, accept parts of it, reject it, and, and, and that's the age-old battle we've been dealing with. But from what, you've, what, we, what we've heard in this research, Steve, it sounds like the early church uh, is, is saying that they're accepting the Word of God just as we in the 21st century would accept it today. Yes. By and large, from all the writings and, and readings you can, you can get your hands on going back in the early church. Mm -hmm. uh, the documentation is there. Where we have the problems is with all the unbelievers, the people who don't want to accept what the Bible plainly teaches. And uh, this is the bottom line. Well, this is, we were run out of time for show number three in this continuing series on early church history. I want you to join us again next time for Christian Answers. I'm Larry Wessels, Director of Christian Answers, with Steve Morrison, our Director of Research. Uh, check out our websites. Uh, email us. Uh, we're, we're open to answer questions. Uh, help you out check out our videos on the internet uh, we've got plenty there but uh, be with us next time for more on church history and what it has to say to us in the 21st century god bless you bye bye Check out our websites, BibleQuery.org. This site answers 7,700 Bible questions. HistoryCart.com. This site reveals early church history and doctrine proving Roman Catholicism is not historically or doctrinally viable. MuslimHope.com. This site is a classic refutation of Islam, a counterfeit religion created by Muhammad. Free newsletters are also available. 